Hey guys, welcome back. I told you in the last video we were going to talk about something new, and you know what? I totally misled you because I totally forgot about this really important thing that we needed to talk about. <laughs> in the next video, we are going to be talking about a new topic. So this very important thing that I completely forgot to talk to you about is when you go through all these processes, you want to keep record of what you've changed to your data. So if there's any kind of invalid data issues, which if you remember that's from like when you're extracting the data, you mess something up or something like that, those kinds of things you'll want to keep track of, but those are less important. What's really most important is any valid data issues. So when the data is valid, it's just really awful. Those kind of changes you're going to want to keep a record of and record it very well. So basically you can kind of keep a record. Like when you find a data issue, you can write it down and then think, okay, what are we going to do to this data to make it not terrible? And then you can do that to the data and just write down in detail what you did because you're going to actually need to use that later. And the reason that is, is because when you have new data that is not historic and you want to make predictions on it, which is like the whole point of machine learning, you need to go through that same process on that new data in order to form your data to the quasi-reality you've been building by messing with your data. <laughs> okay, so think about it this way. Here is your data. This is reality, much, much more complicated. <laughs> and these kind of, kind of represent each other, sort of, but not really. So what we do is we take our data and we go through a cleaning process to try to make this represent this a little better. So we come up with a new clean data source where we've gone through all the processing and we've gotten rid of all the issues and we just got the features that are really relevant to our prediction. All of that kind of stuff is done. It's ready to go. And this better represents this reality. But the thing is, this reality, which was originally tied to this one, has features that match this reality representation. So what we need to do is we need to go through the same cleaning process on what we, what we would say is new data from reality, I guess, and put that into a new reality. Okay, so that's kind of a terrible example. Essentially what I'm saying is when you have a new patient come in, you have to go through those same changes with that patient's data to get it to line up with this new reality. <laughs> so I think of this as historic data. So anything you know this way is historic and this is kind of like present and future. <laughs> okay, so think of some changes we could have done. We could have done a clamp transformation. That could have been on weight, for example. We could have also done a binning process. That could have been on age. And now when you have a patient come in and you know they're like 1,200 pounds, well, we need to go through that clamp transformation. And you know they're like 76, we need to go through that binning process. That's because if you remember back in one of the long videos ago when we were talking about all of the different possibilities of attributes and the model is essentially a traversal of an if statement where you say, Oh, if you have this descriptive feature value with this descriptive feature value with this descriptive feature value, then you have this target feature value. Well, if the descriptive feature values don't line up with that model, then the model is not going to be useful for the new data that you're using. So we might not be able to do anything with a 76 or a 1200 because we don't have a model that represents that data. So we have to go through the same transformations on modern new data. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's really all I have to say. So see you in the next one. Peace.